Hello YouTube, this is Charlie426 and today we have the review of the Expo exclusive HUC Pill Rider Ground Heavy Equipment Type. Now the name is kind of odd, odd but that's how it is. Uh, first of all, as you can see, this is not a premium Bandai kit. This is a Expo exclusive kit. What does that mean? It's a kit where you can only get at Gundam Expos. So um, the main difference would be, the, as you can see, is the color. For now, I do not own the uh, premium Bandai version of the Pale Rider, at least yet. I did pre-order the space type, so later, hopefully, I will be able to make a comparison uh, of the two when it comes to colors. Now, first of all, let's get on to the review. First of all, this kit is very worth the like hunt, for me at least. I got this at the expo. Um, there were some other kits, but this was the only one that I really wanted to get because the Pale Rider was on my list and haunting my list for like ages. So yeah, uh, first of all, what you get, of course, let's start with the components. What you get, of course, is the Pale Rider itself. You get two leg missile launchers, as you can see, and you only get two hands, multi-purpose hands. Uh, let's look at the leftovers first. The leftovers, first of all, you get a gigantic sticker sheet. As you can see, I did not use almost all of them except for the like cameras that goes onto the weapon and for the head cameras and behind the visor as well. Um, I did not know that the Pale Rider was this sticker heavy, but that's how it is. Uh, I'm not saying that because of this, this makes it a bad kit, but it's really up to you. Because if for this version at least, you don't really need these all these stickers. All you need is a little bit of gold paint and maybe a little bit of white or silver and you're pretty much good to go. I will mention what I did and let's see what else you get. You get some leftover polycaps as usual. Uh, as you can see, uh, if you see my Pale Rider, it's currently using the uh, red visor. Those who know the Pale Rider, it has like a similar system like the exam called Hades system or Hades system. It's pretty much the similar principle, but different name. Um, they do give you a leftover green visor, but since on the box, the one I got from the expo, um, it had the red visor on it, so I decided to use it. I, when I get the space type, I will be using the green visor, just letting you guys know. Okay, beyond this, now you get two beam saber effects. Uh, this, the typical beam saber effects, two of them. Um, you get a shield, same as the ones that you get from the GM, uh, I think it's the Gem Striker. Uh, problem is, I, I, I don't know how the color works because, yeah, um, these white sections here and this silver section is a is supposed to be a sticker, which I do not really recall that in the Gem Striker it was like this, but oh well. And you get a shield connector in the middle. You get a bulb, I think this is the normal machine gun or ball pub machine gun. One of my favorite machine guns out there. And you get the 180mm cannon. That's what it says and mentioned on the instruction manual. I'm not sure if it... Oh, boy. I'm not sure if this thing has a another official name, but on the instruction manual, it says 180mm cannon. I'm not sure... And I don't own the gun the ground type, so I do not know if this is the exact same weapon or similar weapon as that one it used. Okay, since we got all that out, now let's get its articulation. Now, for articulation, I'm pretty surprised. Consider, I believe this was out like when the PlayStation 2 era was in, and that was like before revived kits. And I'm gonna say this kit, well, not in all places, but in certain places, it was pretty ahead of its time. And those who still don't know how the Pill Rider or what the Pill Rider is or why it's like this is that. Uh, the Pale Rider was never originally a premium Bandai kit. It was just like a limited edition add-on product from for the game The Missing Link series. Uh, for the, oh wait, not PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 3, I can't remember. But either way, it was supposed to come with a game, like a, a special limited edition. However, the popularity kit, uh, the popularity of this kit went a little bit high to the point where Bandai decided to release a few more, do a few more reissues on this as a premium Bandai kit. So yeah, its origins of the kit was never a premium Bandai -like kit. More, it was still a limited edition, but in a different way. Okay, now let's look at the articulation. Now the head, the head it looks very, very nice and menacing. I, I was never, I, I've only seen this in the SD Gundam G Generation animation, and I was never aware that it had like these gun, gun, 
Gundam-ish eyes behind the visor, but I really love how it looks. And that red section here is a sticker, and the back of the head is the red sticker as well. Um, if you use the green visor, you have to use the green stickers on those parts as well. And also be careful in, in when you're building this, uh, when you're trying to you know, plug in the antenna, just be careful not to break it. Uh, what I also did is that I mostly colored the inside of these vents in gold because in the box they were glow the inside of the vents or the vent sections were all, all glowing in yellowish gold. So that's what I did. So I, that's why I did not use these stickers where if I used the stickers, the other sections would be like white and stuff. But on the box it didn't really show that aspect. So that's what I did. For the head, um, the head, it can go down that much. It can go up that much and then 360 should be no problem at all also before you guys comment on saying what is this kit based off it's this pale rider it was never based on anything no it's not based on the blue destiny like i said it was a it, this is the only only case of a limited edition kit where it does not have a base kit because this was never a premium bondi kit at the first place so this is like the only exception there is so we saw this head articulation. Um, also on the head, I colored the inside of the vents uh, gold, and there's a back section where you have to use yellow stickers. I also colored those in gold as well. Uh, the inside vents here are also gold. Now, uh, according to one of the stickers, that these sections has to be like white or grayish. So I decided to use a a silver on the marker. Did not turn out too well, so I might need to clean that off once more. Uh, because this kit is also is like coated this like this blue metallic coating on it and um, you have to be careful when you're like scraping off or grinding off like nub marks you might actually scrape off the metallic uh, color on it so just be careful I was not too aware of that until like while I was building the kit okay now let's look at the body the body nothing too special um, once again this is technically a little bit old but a very you know ahead of its time kit uh, there's no ab crunch but there is like a middle section piece where this connects the upper body and the waist together. Um, 360 was if you take off these equipment, it's it's technically possible, but I I'm not gonna do that. Once again, it's technically possible, but the beam savers are hindering its process. So so just letting you guys know. Uh, let's look at the backpack. The backpack, a very simple looking backpack. Just slap on slap two pieces together and attach the which call it thrusters and uh, this section actually attaches onto the main back of the kit not exact onto the backpack so it's a pretty interesting connection and also once again more gold paint uh, I think I may need to repaint that part okay um, now let's look at the arms the arms were kind of the part where it kind of impressed me the arms have you can go forward and backward like a modern HD kit um, you can go a little bit up, the shoulder can go a little bit up, and the arm itself can go about 90 degrees. And then the arms itself has a double jointed, uh, um, you have a double joint, which I'm really surprised about that aspect. And it has a typical 360 twist uh, on the arm shoulder itself and on the arms itself, and your typical ball jointed hands. And also, really love these arm, arm guards. Makes me wish that this was the actual the original color because I saw the space type on display at the expo and the pale rider color was really really brighter than I imagined. So uh, I'm just worried because now I'm really used to this color. Okay, now let's, let's look at the waist section. The waist section, um, nothing too special. You have the front skirts. These can be also separated individually. Uh, the back skirt does not move at all. The side skirts don't move that much. Uh, well, kind of stiff anyway, and the legs can go about 90 degrees up front, and then has a double jointed bend. Once again, any gold color you see is something I colored, and also um, surprisingly, this thing has a side swivel, as you can see. Yep, a side swivel. Uh, the leg missile pods do not open; they're just pretty much stuck like this. So that's kind of the main downside if I had to point out something. And you have these side vents on the legs where, as you can see, I, I used a white Gundam marker. However, on the process, the blue metallic coating paint got, I don't know, I, I, maybe it could be the chemicals inside the Gundam marker. It sort of melted the metallic coatings and it kind of turned a little bit light blue color on the white 
paint so that's something I do not know how that worked and this is the only vent on well I did not know if I had to color it in gold and not even in the box it didn't really show so I just left it black the le back of the side of the leg I really love the design of these like extra thrusters on the back of the legs and the feet are your typical ball joint to feet as far as I can tell so yeah okay now we've seen the basic articulation now let's look at its equipment uh, the shield there's a middle shield connector if you know if you have built the gym striker you know that the this shield can be used as a weapon like a pile driver like that there's a um, peg I mean hole on these arm guard and there's this other peg here just connected and one of, probably most one of the most stiffest connection I've ever seen most strongest as well and since there's another peg connected you can spin it around if you want to do so I'm just gonna take it off and yeah okay um, I'm just gonna show you guys one example of the beam saber for now because these do not because these beam sabers do not want to pop out at all yeah this thing has <laughs> This thing is really difficult to take out. As you can see, I, I was just struggling to take that out. Okay, where is it? The beam saber, just your typical connection of a beam saber, and then just slide it in, and you have a, a pretty good connection. It does not fall out like that. Okay, uh, finally, uh, not finally, but we have the machine gun. Once again, multi purpose hand, just slide it in, and you're good to go. I believe the space type gives you a beam rifle instead of this and has a different shield. Which also, because of that design, um, people are hoping for an HG version of Gundam Unit 4 and 5. Okay, finally we got this. Um, I'm just gonna mention this. This does not, this is not like a full, this, is, this part does not have like a swivel system or anything. There's no mechanics, so what you need to do is, you, this is just pegged in and what you do is just flip it and then reconnect it like that and so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take this off and the way how you're supposed to um, store it in is that you you're supposed to fold it in like that and then yeah um, there's a there's a poly cap a hole here and then there's a peg on the back and this thing has also has articulation and since uh, each section is connected to a poly um, you know, polycap, you can spin this around, you can f uh, fold this around, you can do this, you can do it like that. And also for the weapon, I didn't, this thing does not have much articulation as I saw it, because this does not like go as much as you think. As far as I know, what you do is you, you flip this over, you connect these two again, and then there's a handle that pops out right over here if I can get that. I just cut my nail, so I'm having trouble. There we go. We have a handle here, and yeah, uh, you just make it hold it as you know possible as you can. It does this doesn't this thing cannon does not go as high as you think. This is like as far as as I tried. I'm pretty sure there's other ways. I mean, if if you can technically disconnect this part, you can do it more better. But I do like the way how this is connected. So yeah, that's pretty much it. The only downside I would have to say about this kit itself is the lack of opened uh, missile pods and the whole buttload of amount of stickers that's uh, you know given. But since uh, considering the time that this came out, I'm not gonna blame that part. And since it's it's a pale rider, it, it can slip. I can I can just I can forgive that. So that was pretty much it for the review of the. Expo exclusive pale rider. Once again, I don't. If you can get this one, it, I would really recommend this. But since this does have a higher price compared to the normal one, I mean the premium Bandai version one. So uh, just get what you can get. The pale rider itself is pretty much a really good kit and worth the hunt. It's worth the hunt. I know it's a limited edition kit. I know it's difficult to get, but once you get it, it's really worth it. I don't expect this kit to be ever normal released ever, even its variants. That, that's just a that's just a simple like that's the sort of feeling I have for this kit. But yeah, it's no matter what, it's a very good looking kit and it's really yeah, just amazing. Anyway, thank you for watching the review. I hope you guys enjoyed the review and I hope this was helpful for those who are trying to get this kit. If you guys got any questions or requests, leave a comment below. If I got anything wrong, leave a comment below as well. I still have more kits to build and buy and make reviews of, so please stay tuned. Until then, see you guys next time.